Good morning. Welcome to the house of God. This morning I'm going to read some verses from Psalm 139, verses 13 through 18 that says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body, and all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Our God is so great. He has made us. He knit us together. And he has a great and wonderful plan for us. Isn't that something to praise him for? Amen. <clears throat> Join me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this day and just praise you for your goodness. We exalt you. you li we lift you up. And Lord, we want to express our gratitude and love to you this day. In Christ's name. Jerry, it is a happy day. Would you stand this morning and let's lift our voices and sing about the greatest day in history.
participate in a fundraiser for the Pregnancy Resource Center of Juno. And the idea is you take this little bottle and you fill it up with coins or currency or checks and bring it back on Father's Day. And we give those funds through the Pregnancy Resource Center of Juno, which goes to help moms and little ones meet their needs. So I encourage you to pick one of these up. And guess what? If you're not a cash and carry kind of person, there are a couple of QR codes on the side of the bottle. And so you can do PayPal or Venmo or your other favorite electronic means of contributing and still participate if you don't do the coins and cash thing. So be aware of that. Please pick up one of those bottles if you haven't already. <clears throat> Tonight there will be our monthly mission service. We invite you to be a part of that. That's at 6 o'clock. And Freddie told me to remind the ladies that because it's Mother's Day, ladies get to choose what songs they would like to sing as part of the worship service. So, that's always kind of a fun time. Play Stump the Band. Um, and also, board members, board meeting, this Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Um, so, you should have... Reports and agendas in your little mailboxes, board members, so please pick those up. And then a work day coming up this Saturday, the 18th, um, to do some exterior things that need to be done around the church building and property. So if you could participate with that, that's at 10 o'clock, right after the men's breakfast. So, and that's at 8.30. So, lots of opportunities, lots of stuff in your bulletin. Please make use of that. And the other thing that I wanted to mention is that the Sunday School Auction and Potluck is coming up on two weeks from today. And there's a list of ideas if you'd like to donate a service or something that to be auctioned for that Sunday School Auction. This is a thing that we do to help sponsor scholarships to send kids to Echo Ranch Bible Camp. And so if you want to bid, show up on... That Sunday, if you want to contribute a gift or a, an item or a service, there's a list of ideas or other things, and there's a sign-up sheet for that in the foyer. So, lots of ways to get involved, so make use of them, I ask. And now, would you join me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we love to come into your house to sing your praise, to acknowledge your goodness, and to express our love and gratitude to you, for indeed we are grateful people. We recognize that you are a great and mighty God, and without you, we would be nothing and have nothing. We need you desperately, Lord. So I invite you now to fill this place, speak to our hearts, as we earnestly and honestly seek you, out of our love for you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. May these uh, words of these next few songs speak to our hearts. I asked Pam if she'd be willing to sing the first verse for us. Thank you. 
parents may not know, that doesn't mean taking a real candle, does it? Well, in our weather, that's going to snuff out really fast. Taking a candle could mean taking the Word of God, the Bible with you. Taking your candle for most of us is the light inside of us. And I've done this before because it's the visual to me makes so much sense. Am I carrying a candle around here? <laughs> Ugh. I don't want to be here. Oh, wrong. I definitely want to be here. I so want to be here. And that light inside should reflect in our faces. And that's what we need to take to people that need it. Don't you think so? I just, sorry, Pastor. <clears throat> no, I, <clears throat> I just wanted, especially those little guys, right, Kai? When, when we sing, we're going to take our candle, we're going to take Jesus inside of us. And he's going to fill us with all the light, right? Yeah. <sighs> and may he find us faithful. Would you stand as we sing these next two uh, choruses together? this morning. Yeah, Freddie, you do need to change your heart because yesterday you were faced with something and you you wanted to, ah, oh, but, but God wants me to be more like him. And what a difference that makes. If I want to just take that situation and, and be negative about it, that doesn't do anybody any good, does it? So change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Because I want to be more like you because life would be so much better. The altar is open if, if you uh, want to come and kneel. Let's sing this song together. I would actually like the instruments to play it through once.
do that in all of our lives to change us. When we're struggling, we can go to him and say, I need you, God. I'm so grateful for that this morning. A couple of things I want us to be praying for. One, as Echo Ranch starts up its ministry, starting tomorrow, and uh, Carson will be there and a few others, um, many of our kids. Um, and we'll have a special sending off tonight. So for them especially. But then also, word retreat is happening right now. That's why there's a few people missing. Our percussion, <laughs> Viliami, and, uh, and others who are there. And let's just pray that God would move within the men's word retreat group right now. So that's a couple of things. But I want to read these words from the from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 33. Many might remember 33.3 is the uh, phone number of God. For those who remember that you used to dial, you know, there was Westport 1 or Westport 2 or something like that. You all understand some of that type of thinking. But I love how it says, while Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the guard, so it was confined. And you might find yourself confined that there's something that's just keeping you from going forward. But you can always go to him in prayer because it says, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. This is what the Lord says. He who made the earth and the Lord who formed it and established it. The Lord is his name. Call to me. And I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. God is indeed amongst us and talking to us to what we need. Let's go to him and pray. Father God, thank you that you are here. That you, God, are helping us. That you, God, are changing us changing our perspective. Maybe there's things happening. We just don't know why. We don't understand. But you are in the midst of it all, helping and guiding and strengthening. And I pray for your touch on all who might be just wondering why, what's going on. Lord, thank you that we can call to you at all times, whenever, that you are listening. You are the one that even in the midst of our confinements, our struggles with life, you are there. Jesus, we want to lift up two specific types of groups this morning. We want to pray for the word retreats, the men in the words ret word retreat right now. That you would guide them, that you would strengthen them, that you would help them to see you, that they would sense you, that you would do a mighty work in each of their lives. Thank you that you indeed are with them. Well, Father God, too, we want to pray for, for Echo Ranch as they begin their ministry this summer to many kids, to many who are struggling maybe with their faith, some who don't have faith, some who are in their faith. Would you just guide them? Would you just be there in a very special way? The two, Lord, you would be with our counselors that go. That you would be with them. I know they're going to be short-handed. I know that they're wondering how. But Lord, I know you provide. And I ask that you would be with them and empower them in ways that are even beyond their thinking. Use them in a special way. And Father God, thank you that we can come to you with everything that's going on in our lives. Good and bad and different. Whatever. Thank you. The Lord, I'd be remiss if I didn't pray for our mothers. For those that are missing their mothers. I ask for your special touch right now on them. For moms who are maybe struggling. That Lord God, you would be with them right now. Lord, for those of us who 
need you. Would you just come and bless our mothers in a special way. Give them the strength they need. Thank you, Jesus, for all the things you do and how you're with us. And we'll be careful to give you the glory for you are worthy of it all. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> Five hundred and thirty three if you like to look in your home. <laughs> starts moving, I say that to us as God gives us insight. Let's share that with one another. In fact, you know, Freddie, you took me back a few years. I remember uh, Keith Wright growing up at Jewel Lake. Some who might know Keith Wright. He was a, an engineer, a great guy. He was part of the church in, at, that I grew up under. And Keith... Uh, would just get blessed leading worship and just all of a sudden just kind of sing that one more time. I don't see the smiles on your face. I have, Come on, does this matter? We'd sing Amazing Grace as if it was a dirge. You know, 
this is good news, he would say. And I always appreciate that. So thank you for reminding us. Um, Because it is easy to get caught up, is it not? To get caught up in the things of this world where we forget about who God is. He's the one who sets us free. He's the one who's helping us in so many different ways. I do want to say, as I begin my sermon, thank you, moms. Thank you. It's not easy. Uh, I can't say that personally. I've never been a mom. And I never will be. (laughs) But you know what? I am thankful because I have had a fantastic wife who has been a great mom. I have known many others. I've also had some struggles at times. Not with my mothers, but I have seen and I have heard. And I know it's a struggle. But you know what? God is there. And he's our great example. In fact, moms who... who, who, ah, Yeah, there's no other way to say it, but moms want the best for their kids. They really do. And they struggle. It's so hard. I don't know how. I don't know how to do it. Honestly. Those who are moms, thank you. No other way of saying it. We love you. We really do. Thank you for what you do. Now, the interesting thing is that moms are a great example of what it means to be a blessing. What we learn in regard to mothers is so often an important thing for us to catch about God. And even when moms miss this, it's still what we all long for with moms. And that is the care, the, the being there that will, will do so many things for their own kids. Stories that I have and that I would love to be able to share just don't feel right right now to say them. But this whole desire to care comes from God. He is the one. And we, as I said, we may not live up to that image, but God wants to help us and to see those things. Our passage today contains only three verses. It's there at the very beginning of the Bible. It's in the book of Genesis. It's right after, of course, chapters 1 through 11. (laughs) 1 through 11 comprise of a whole lot of history. And then starts chapter 12, and it only deals with about three, four generations of people. The first one deals with all kinds of generations and all kinds of struggles, and some who live for God and some who don't. And in fact, chapter 11, we hear about Babel which to next Sunday, we're going to talk about how the curse of Babel was taken care of in Pentecost. Babel was when man tried to find his own way of doing things. And God said, "Ah, you're missing it. There's no way. And so they are confused. But it's interesting, then... There's more genera- or genealogy and so forth. And we hear about a man named Terah who gets this call to leave his land, which was where the Tower of Babel was. And he starts moving. We don't know why he stops. We don't really understand. But then one day, God called to his son, Terah's son, Abraham, go leave your people. And I want to do something special for you. So here is our verses. Please stand in honor of God's word as I read Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. The word of the Lord for us today. Genesis 12, starting with verse 1. The Lord had said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household To the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. 
and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. <laughs> Father, use these words, and may we hear what you are trying to say to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Let's dig a little into this passage, because it's, it's full of all kinds of fantastic things. We have this call of Abram. You know, he, we know him really as Abraham, but his initial name was Abram. And just to catch a little of this, it's interesting that Abram and his wife are 75 when this story begins. Abram is 75 years of age. And he's called to leave his family and so forth and go to a new place. And it also says to us before this that Sarah, Sarah, his wife, is barren. She can't have any kids. And she's up there in age two. She's 10 years younger. How is that going to happen? They're getting up there in the age. How is this going to happen? And we know that they even take matters in their own hands and make a mess of things. Family struggles, all kinds of... And he, he obeys God and he does those things, but life is still messy. And just so you understand, here is the person who is the beginner of this whole special way of reaching humanity to bring him back, bring us back into relationship and it's messy. Life is not so nice. They're wanting to have kids and they can't. And in fact, it gets to the point where a kid only shows up at a hundred? Are you kidding me? What? <laughs> Jim and Natalie, you know you're getting close to their ages. <laughs> but I don't think you want to have kids anymore. <laughs> I want us to catch. God does something where it is impossible. And he does something fantastic in the midst of impossible. That's who this God is, who is going to create and it can only be declared, declared to be from God. Enough so that even Sarah, <laughs> they have to name the child, laugh. <laughs> he laughs because she can't believe it. She can't even believe when the first the angel says it's going to happen. No way. No way. And God comes in and in the midst of all of this, Barrenness, in the midst of all the chaos, in the midst of all the history, God comes in and does something special. <laughs> but he doesn't just bless them for their own sake or even to create a new nation. In or not even for that. He does it so that all people will be blessed. It's interesting that you got this call, but Abram and his family start thinking it's for them alone. Now, not Abram. He is constantly going around, and if you miss it, I mean, there's a time when he has to intercede on his nephew. What a mess there. Lot, don't go there. Don't go there with me. Oh, what a mess. But you know what? Even in the midst of it, God is using Abraham to bless others and see how good he does it. And not only that, he comes back from helping a group because some people have been taken away and he goes and he, he, he uh, finds them and brings them back. He helps them. The word is escaping me. Yes, rescues them. Thank you, Jerry. I knew I could count on you. But he rescues them. And then in the midst of that, he goes and he finds a man named Melchizedek. And he blesses 
Melchizedek blesses him, but then Melchizedek is blessed from Abram because he gives him a tithe. He gives him 10%. And we have all of that stuff. What a beautiful way of how God blesses him and he blesses others. See, it's not about just, hey, I'm somebody special. You are. You are. Every one of us is somebody special. But we're not special so that we could just go back and say, yeah, I'm somebody, somebody special. The Jewish people didn't seem to get that in their head in Jesus' day. They really think it's about them. We talked about it last week. About the Good Samaritan, you know. The priest, oh, that's, no, what am I going to do there? And when the teacher of the law was trying to justify himself, he couldn't even say the person's name. He was so angry at those Samaritans, those other people. You know, those people. I have been catching myself. When I start saying those people, God says, no. It's never those people. Ouch. (coughs) So we have Abram. And you wonder why at times... God keeps using them, but he does. It's interesting. We have another time within a group of people who are really mean. In time, they will really be mean to to the Israelites. Remember what happens is there's a famine throughout the land. And there is a boy who's sort of full of himself. In fact, his dad thinks he's pretty good special too. Joseph. Joseph's really full of himself. I'm sorry. I mean, I look at that story and go, he was getting what he deserved. He was getting what he deserved. I mean, wow, you just can't go around saying, I'm mom and dad's favorite. I'm the best. (laughs) Sorry, without getting the rather, would that have gone well over in any of your families? One of the kids saying, hey, I'm more important. And if mom and dad started acting that way even, would that have gone over? Absolutely not. But God was in the midst of all of that and blessing. It is interesting because Joseph fulfills all of what God had already said to him. And then he becomes a great blessing there in Egypt. But then the people who were being blessed started cursing them. And Egypt falls in some of the worst ways. So here is what's happening. So here's the whole history with one exception. Jesus comes amongst them and even the people reject him. Those that he created, those that he was part of, those that he wanted to help save them. They rejected him. And they started thinking, we're more important. And Jesus cries over Jerusalem and weeps and wishes they would have got it right. Because, see, they got it to the point where we're the special chosen people. We're the special people. And everybody just better get used to that. And Jesus says, no. Remember what you were called for. You were called to be a blessing to the world. Not to look down your noses at them. And throughout history, that has been so true. Even sometimes the church has been guilty of this. Throughout history. History And it's, it just seems to be this constant theme of when we start thinking about ourselves only and that God has saved me and it's so good that I'll literally get away from everybody so I could stay pure. Even in scripture, there's another spot where it talks sort of about the bad side, but still there's this idea, I don't want to get contaminated. Mm-hmm. 
I understand the need to sometimes pull away because if we're tempted or we struggle with some area, we need to stay away from it. I get that. But that's not why what God's wanting. He's wanting us to overcome. And he wants us to be set free, not so that we can go around saying, hey, I'm free, I'm fine, I'm all good. I don't care about the rest of you. That's not why he sets us free. He sets us free so we can go and do something. We are set free to share. God is calling us to follow him, to follow his example, to care for others. I loved how the Apostle Paul will take this in Galatians. The whole reason how he sees him sees the ministry was that the whole point of the Gentiles was because of this passage. This passage in Genesis is why Paul knew he needed to go. Galatians 3.8 is so beautiful about how he says, this is why God said, because all people will be blessed through Abraham. All people, all people. God wants us to bless others. Not just bless us, but to bless others. Last week I mentioned it already, but I want to focus on two areas about blessing. What it means to be a blessing. First though, I want to ask, just real briefly, did anybody remember the homework from last week? Or remember our homework? I know that's a Pastor Mike thing, but I expanded it a bit. The whole idea of are we going out, are we to use bless? And if we can, go to the next slide because I want to look at it. And are we beginning with prayer, listening, actively listening to people, eating with others, serve others, share the story? That's our homework. We are to be according to the scripture. And it, what's interesting in this passage from Genesis, where it says, and I will make you a blessing, it's more than just, I will make you a blessing. I want you to go and bless people. It is a command, not just a, and I will bless all people through you. I want you to go and bless people. And we do that first, and I just want to spend time on the first, first two parts of this. Be for begin with prayer. This is how we can do that, okay? Just a little teaching time, a little idea. Think of two or three people. And write down those people. If you've got a piece of paper there with you, you've got a bullet or something, you've got a little pencil, write down two or three names of people that God just has put on your heart to make, to be a blessing to. People who need a blessing. Write them down. And then, having written them down, pray. Pray for them. Spend time just praying. Nothing else. Nothing else. And I really recommend, unless God so moves you to do anything more, just pray. Just pray. And ask him for opportunities. If it gets to the next step, then listen. Listen actively. So that's the second thing. Two things to do. Bless by beginning with prayer. Pray for them. Pray for those two people. And then ask for opportunities to just listen. Don't interject your own feelings. Don't interject how you think they should be. Don't interject. Except for to ask questions for them to clarify. People all around us included, each of us included, want to be heard, right? We want somebody just to listen to us. 
Most of the time, we just really want somebody to care about my story. And I'm guilty. I think we all are guilty at times. We so get caught up in our thinking that we don't hear the other person. Oh, we try to relate. I'm really good at that. That's one way I try to remember, but I have got to pull back and say, no, listen and act, ask questions that get them to answer more to me. Find out. Not being nosy, please. Don't use it as a way of then sharing with others. But listen. Let God speak to you in them. Hear what they're going through. And take that as a point of prayer. See, those two go together. Begin with prayer. Pray for those people. Pray for the two people, two or three people God puts on your heart. And then start listening. Ask, ask God for opportunities to just listen. Don't do anything else. Seriously, don't do anything else. You get time to eat. Okay? He'll get time to eat. And to do the other three. But do those two things. And I will tell you, you will begin blessing people. Too often, we want to see it happen. But we really, truly, if we were in other shoes, really want to know, does anybody really care enough to listen, to enough to pray for me? This morning, let's be sensitive to Spirit's leading. There's a prayer that's in the book of Numbers. And I know the book of Numbers. Isn't that a bunch of numbers? Yes. There's some good stories in there. But there is a, probably the best blessing of all time. And in my opinion, it's one of the best blessings in all of Scripture. Chapter 6, verse 24 through 26. Love this. It's often a benediction, but it's the priestly blessing. I'm just going to stop real quick. We are to be the priesthood to the people all around us. The priesthood of all believers. That is a doctrinal stance of the church universal. We are to be a priesthood of believers to help people all around. And we have a great prayer. And I still remember Richard Harding, the pastor in Cordova, loved him dearly and loved what he had to share with me. He said, Fred, your first, first and foremost position as a pastor, as a beginning, he said, is to bless people. Is to go around blessing people. Wanting their best. Wanting to see them come to Christ. Want to bless them. And I'm so thankful that I learned that because here is the way that we can pray a prayer of blessing. Numbers chapter six, verse 24. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. That is a way to go and bless people. It is a way to start seeing transformation. It is a way to know. And for all of us today, if you want to know that peace, you want to have it, I pray that for you. And I hope that we will all see this. I hope for the people I have on my list, the two to three people, that you will pray this, that they will sense it and they will see their need for a savior. Not because we want to be able to go and say, I got another one. No, it's because a friend gets to meet my friend. That's what we're about. We want people to, we want everybody to be part of the family. Let's pray. And I'm going to pray this benediction for us as we go so that we can then go and be a blessing. Let's pray. Father God, thank you 
for this day that you've given to us. Thank you for this call to be a blessing to the people all around us. Help us, Lord, to keep praying for our friends, our loved ones, the people who so desperately need, not just you, but to have a blessing, that their life seems to be strong, uh, just constant struggle. Lord, would you help us to pray for them? And then, Lord, help us to listen to what's going on and how you are trying to direct us to how to help. But, Lord, help us to stay there. Help us to stay in prayer and listening mode and allow your spirit to do his work. The Lord, now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And God's people said, Amen. Go and be a blessing. <laughs>